Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make Gobba from How to Train Your Dragon. Now, um, as many of you know, um, Courtney Nicole from How to Loom Your Dragon and I are doing a joint venture. She makes the dragons and has asked me if I would make some of the figures to go with. So um, I'm very honoured to be able to do that and uh, this is the third one that I've made. As you know, I've made Hiccup and I've made Astrid. So so this one is Gobba, he is the, the blacksmith and um, he's a bit taller than regular figures that I make. Um, his body actually fits the whole um, loom so we're going to do his head separately so that we can then just add that to the top of the loom. Our loom is going to be a single loom in the offset configuration. It's going to be um, columns one and three being slightly lower than column two. The arrow is facing towards us and we double band, which means when you place the bands, you're going to be placing two bands at the same time instead of one. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing his head first. So we'll start at the very top and do his horns for his helmet first. And we're not going to be double banding for them. We're going to start by taking um, a single silver or, or um, grey, twist it into a figure eight, loop it on itself and you're going to place those on the peg. Now we're going to do four of these, four of these silver or grey if you don't have silver. The colours that I'm using today for Gobba are silver or grey, brown, skin tone, yellow, and I'm also going to be using um, a tan for his shirt. Now we do four of those, then we're going to move to brown. Again, figure eight, loop it on itself, and we're going to do five of these. Three, four, five and we'll finish with an end cap on that one. Take a single band, wrap it once and twice and that pops on here as the end cap. We're going to do two of these so we'll do the same on the other side. Go back to silver, one, two, three, Four, and then five of the brown, one, two, three, four, and five with an end cap. Wrap it once and twice and pop the end cap on. Now if you don't like that the bands are a bit twisted on each other just twirl your hook around the inside of the bands careful not to drop them um, but they do sort of even themselves out a bit so that they don't look so twisted on each well, on themselves I suppose not on each other but on themselves so twirl your hook around to untangle them. I think it's a personal preference thing. When you're ready, dig down past the end cap and grab the brown bands to loop up. We're looping all the way to the top. You will need some sort of holding hook. You can use a pencil, a chopstick, um, toothpick whatever you have really if you don't have another hook. Sometimes when you buy these packets of bands you get these horrible plastic hooks in them. I usually throw them away but they're good to use as a, a holding hook as well. So I've looped those all the way to the top. Take two silver bands, grey bands, do not loop them on themselves, you're just going to hold them like that and pull through to the back of the peg here and we'll loop them off. You don't tie them off, okay? You just loop them through like that. 
don't worry about the end cap like that, it doesn't matter. Take your next two silver bands, place under those. You can do it on the side, the outside is easier because you can then put your bands on nice and easy. Pull through to the back side of the peg and we pull these off. This is where we're going to need our holding hook. I know you all laugh at me when I say that this uh, this holding hook bites me. It's so incredibly sharp. The uh, the hook bit is so incredibly sharp that it threatens to slice my finger off like a knife. But it's okay for a holding hook and to take things off the loom. So there's our horns for his helmet. Next, we need to make his moustache. So, two bands, place them on your pegs. Another two, and we're doing yellow for his moustache, because he is Nordic after all. There we go. Make sure they're not too twisted. Now, take a single brown, figure eight, loop it on itself, and place that there. And the same again. And then we're going to do another two yellow. And another two yellow. Oops, come here yellows. Two yellow. Two yellow. A single brown. Figure eight. Loop it on itself. Now the reason that I'm doing the browns as a single band and looping on itself is that they're supposed to be the bindings for his moustache. They're not actually the hair of his moustache. So now we need end caps. So take a single yellow, wrap it once and twice, pop that on the end, and again the other side. Oops once and twice and dig down we're going to loop this all up this is his moustache And this can also sit on your holding hook. I'm sitting it on the other end of my holding hook. Like that. Don't worry that it twists up and whatnot. We can fix that at the end. So there we go, that's going to sit there. If you can see that it's looped on itself, if it's twisted on itself, just try and budge that over so that it's not so twisted. But there we have his horns and his moustache. So now we're going to lay the bands for the top of his head to start with, which double banding is going to be the silver. If you don't have silver, try grey. If you don't have grey, you could even use black, or a black helmet. Now we move to skin tone bands. Normally with skin tone we would do hair like this and then we'd do two pair down the middle, a pair either side like this and then we'd do the side bits for the jaw. Well he's got a bit of a longer face and as I said he's a larger figure that we're making so we're coming down an extra two spaces either side of the face like that. Okay. And that means coming down more in the center of the face as well. To the side. To the side. Whoops. Really be careful if you have pets, really be careful if you drop a band or lose a band or flick it somewhere. You really want to make sure you try and grab those because um, 
my cat actually picked up a hairband of my daughter's it wasn't even one of my looming bands and it got stuck around his tongue and we had to thank goodness we noticed because we had to rush him to the hospital to have the uh, the band cut off he couldn't actually get it off so please be very mindful around your dogs and cats it's uh, they're not good for them take a single yellow band we're going to wrap it once twice and three times and then again to the next one another single wrap it once twice and three times this gets slid onto a single skin tone this is how you do eyes as well by the way I mean not not with yellow but um, you would do black or blue or white whatever like that now this is going to go one side here the other side here and these are his eyebrows this top part of the band here you're going to lift up and loop over there and that acts as a crossover band now we're going to do his his eyes so we take a single twist it once twice and three times and we're going to place that here and for his eyes we're actually going to use I'm using beads but as I said you can use um, bands I'm going to thread mine on to a single band and splay that between these two pegs here take the top part of the band and lift it up again so that it acts as a crossover band now we're going to put his nose here between these two pegs and I'm actually going to make use of the there's two bands there for his nose I'm going to take the top one off okay so that's the top band you have two bands here I've taken the top one off I'm going to take three bands and I'm going to wrap them around my hook and I'm going to do it really carefully so that I don't get too many twists and snarls okay and then I'm going to slide that on again carefully lifting it over rather than just dragging it over okay and I'm going to slide that through there and I'm going to replace my band here that is going to be his nose alright I'm going to take a single band and we need to place it here as a crossover band and the same here as a crossover band now if you want this to be a bit tighter you would take it and figure eight loop it like that and that's how you would place it okay but I don't think there's any need to have it that tight just take a single and loop it across like so for his ears which are going to go between these two pegs here either side take two bands wrap once and twice slide on to two bands take your hook out and we splay them open and find this two the two sides of the one band so if I pull this side the other side moves that's how you know you've got the right band okay and we're going to put one side one one band up here by his eyebrows the other side goes down here by his eyes all right just there let's do his ears for the other side as two bands wrap once and twice slide on to two bands Take your hook out, splay these open. The other way to know you've got the right ones is if you pull it apart, you can see a hole between the two, and that's the other way that you can know you've got the right ends to the bands. So one side goes up here by his eyebrows, and the other side goes down here by his eyes, right there. Now, we also, I'm going to do chubby cheeks on him. I like him to have sort of little chubby cheeks. So take a single band, wrap it around your hook once and twice. Slide on to a pair. And then slide on to another pair. And we're going to put our loops here. And then dig down through the end cap and put those there on the jaw to the other side wrap once and twice 
slide onto a pair, slide onto another pair, the loops that are on our hook, go this side here, push your hook through the end cap, stretch it out to go here by his jaw. Now, a bit of fancy footwork, we need to put his horns on, so I'm going to take these two silver bands off from the top of his head here, okay? And what we're going to do is slide our first pair of horns onto these two. Like so. Then take the other side here and slide these ones on here, like so. And then replace these two bands here, like that. His moustache. I'm actually going to slide his moustache onto two skin tone bands. So, move them up to the top of my hook, place my skin tone bands on the end and slide those over. I'm going to reclaim the end of my band and take the two closest to me up, over and off. Now this allows me to place the bands at the right angle. If I was doing it the other way they would be sideways like this and I don't want that. I want them to be sitting there at the right angle. They go under his nose here, alright, just like that. Now we're going to need an end cap here, so a single band, wrap it once and twice and pop that here. He has a chin extension. Now to do the chin extension you're going to need skin tone bands come down to the end of your loom and we're going to do a pair, another pair and one more pair. Do the same but you're starting a little bit above because of the offset and we want three columns of this. Take a skin tone band and stretch it across for your crossover and another one for underneath that and then we're going to need to put end caps on the three. So a single band, wrap it once and twice and pop that on the end. Skin tone, wrap it once and twice, pop it on the end and another skin tone wrapped once and twice and popped on the end. Let's loop these up, dig down, find the bottom skin tone, two skin tone bands at the bottom, loop them up, push past that end cap, and then let's loop these up, and again this will sit on a holding hook for a few seconds. Push the crossover bands back with the back of your hook so that you can just expose those two bands. Take this off the loom like so. So this needs to sit on a holding hook and I probably should have taken it off my loom using the holding hook that I was going to use. That was a bit silly of me but never mind I can transfer. There we go. So that's going to sit on a holding hook like that. Now turn it over where we have these three little loops for the end caps. Put your hook through like that. Take a single skin tone, slide those loops of the end cap onto them like that. Reclaim the end of your band and take the side closest to you up, over and off and pull tight into a slip knot, just like that. That's going to actually get threaded through his chest. But we're just going to leave this until we're ready to pop it on the end of his chin here. So, let's look at his face. We need to 
and I, I, I don't want to put a crossover band here but I'm going to take a single um, silver and I'm, I'm going to do it upside down I'm going to actually do it like that so that it, it crosses over this way okay and in fact I'm, I'm going to make it tighter I'm, in fact I'm going to break the band <laughs> figure eight loop it on itself and we'll put it like that and that will draw his little helmet in okay okay dig down past the end cap and grab the two top skin tone bands and loop to the side make sure everything is pushed down let's go to the other side and loop up and the middle and loop up we can now put our chin extension on as you can see it's divided into four bands four loops for that column four loops for the middle column and four loops for the third column we're going to take the first four loops and that goes on the left the next four loops push it down so it doesn't fall off the next four loops go in the middle and the last four loops go on the right like so okay keep the moustache out of the way keep it up there we're going to take the chubby cheek off okay so take that side off hold it out with your hands you're quite familiar with doing that keep the moustache out of the way dig down we're finding these two bands here so dig down past everything else to find those two bottom skin tone bands and loop up once you've looped those up you can put the chubby cheek back on and we can loop this next one up so dig down find the two back uh, two skin tone bands and loop up to the ear that locks that into place let's do this side take the chubby cheek off hold it out to the side move the moustache out of the way you're looking for the bottom two bands loop them up and replace the chubby cheek now Dig down, grab the two bottom bands, loop up to the ear. Ear, ear, let's be having ya. All right, we're at the moustache. Now the moustache, we're going to dig down here, find the two bands. Now you can't just loop them up because you're going to have the moustache either side. So what we're going to do is splay that open and pop the ends of the moustache through. Okay like that and then loop it up and then make sure that that is pushed down we have the nose next dig down find the two bottom bands and loop up don't worry too much about the nose being under these we'll pick that out we'll pick the nose <laughs> dig down on the ears and find the two bottom bands Did I gross you all out? Loop up the middle here. Now, loop up the helmet on one side and the helmet on the other side. What we want to do now is actually get our, when we dig down and find these two bands here, instead of just looping them to the side, what I want to do is push my hook through the bands, the middle of the bands of his horn and pull them through and then loop in so that the horns are sitting on top of those two bands like that. I'm going to do the same the other side. I'm going to dig down and find the two bands for the horn like that. Hold them with my finger I'm turning my, lo my loom around because I'm right handed. What I want to do is pull the horn so that I can get my hook between those bands put those two loops on drag them through and place them on the peg 
okay so that they are on the top turn my loop, loom around again and I have these last two to loop up there's one where's the other one there it is let's grab two bands throw them everywhere push your hook down through the outside here put your two bands on the end and pull them through and to the back side of the peg take the two closest to you up over and off and pull tight we're ready to take his face off the loom so I use the back of a hook I hate broken bands and uh, this I just feel relieves a bit of the pressure So we have his face off the loom. I'm going to pull out his chubby cheeks like this. One chubby cheek, two chubby cheeks. Here's his ear. Pull his ear out so that it's sticking out like so. Now, there's his eyes. Pull those forward to the forefront. There we go. Is his moustache. We have to dig down and find his nose. It's in here somewhere. I'm going to grab a different hook. I'm going to push your hook in between his eyes. See those bands that are horizontal? They are his nose. So pull that through and we can pretty that up a little bit. To pretty it up, just poke your hook through and you just sort of twist the bands around a bit until they form a shape that you're happy with and I mean he's he's a warrior so he's not going to be uber uber beautiful so I wouldn't worry if uh, they're a bit skew if that's another technical term by the way There we go. Dumb have his nose like that. And there's his moustache. Oh, his nose is being a bit funny today. There we go. Right, so that is his face. Okay. And you can fiddle and faff around with his moustache all you want. Now, what we're going to do. I do want, I want his nose a little bit, see how it's all curled up here? I don't like that. <laughs> Unravel, you silly sausage. This is why it's always good to take care when you twist your, when you put your bands on your hook. Okay, there we go. That's better. I'm a bit more comfortable with that. All right, so that is his head. Now we're going to make his body, and his head will actually stick to that via this end cap here and the end cap that we used to make his chubby cheeks. Okay, so those are the three points that will sit and make his shoulders. So if you grab the single loom again, what we're going to do, he doesn't really have a neck per se. It starts off with the tan colour of his shirt. So I'm using a different colour than skin tone 
for his shirt. But what we might try and do first, I'm going to take his little jacket off so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to make his arms. And we make his jacket after the fact. Come on. There we go. So his jacket is off. So as you can see, his arms are huge. They're not the standard little arms that we have. They're three columns long, okay? And his body is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven columns, okay? So we have to do a bit of fancy footwork here. Let's do his arms. Skin tone. Double banding. And we'll do one at a time. And you can actually move your column. You can actually move it down. Ah, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll move it down to standard configuration so all three columns are the same. Now we're coming down, we're doing his we're doing his good arm first. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five pair of skin tone. Now we're moving to brown, and we do two brown, now for this we're going to put a brown pair in the center, and then these two brown will go from the center to the right, and then from the center to the left, and then we're going to have another pair of skin tone and we will put an end cap on here so a single band wrap once and twice and pop that on here we're going to need some crossover bands so take a single and we're going to actually loop this on itself and do a tight one there okay now from here to here these are just singles that are stretching across the three columns like so. Dig down past the end cap and loop up. Dig down find the top two brown, loop to the side, loop to the side and loop up and then we just loop to the top of the loom. like that. We need a holding hook. Or pencil, chopstick, whatever. That is our first arm, okay? We've got great big hoof and heart arms here. Let's do our second arm. Now, as you might remember, our second arm is going to be a little bit different. Our second arm has a whopping great axe on the end of it. So we're going to go down three pair of skin tone. And then we're going to do brown. 
I'm going to do a pair of brown, a pair of brown, and a pair of brown. Then we're going to use our silver. And we're going to do what we did with the brown before, which was two from the middle to the middle, two from the middle to the right, two from the middle to the left, and this is the silver. We're going to take a silver band, stretch it, figure eight, loop it on itself, and that will go here as a crossover. We're going to do a single brown that we do not loop on itself as a crossover, a single beige or skin tone and another single skin tone. So I'm going to continue with his arm and this is the one with the hammer on it. Now that we've reached the, uh, the middle piece here where it all sort of joins in, we're going to take a single band and figure eight. So twist it, stretch it, twist it, figure eight, loop it on itself and that gets placed here. We're going to do that four times. So one, two, three, and four. Now from here we're going to go back to double banding and place two bands here and here. And here and do that until we reach the end of our loom. If your bands are a bit twisted just run your hook through the center of them. There's one and two, oops, throw your hook around, try not to stab too many people, and twist your bands. You know, I'm only doing this so that it gives you time to catch up with me, right? <laughs> All right, take two bands and we're going to place them from the middle to the right, and then from the left to the middle. And that's quite important, the order of those two. Then let's do a crossover band and a crossover band. We're going to put an end cap just on this corner here. So take a single band, wrap it once and twice and pop that here. That's our starting point and we need something to make it so it doesn't all fall apart. Pull apart. So dig down past that end cap and grab those two bands that go to the right and loop them to the right. Do the same to the next two top bands, loop them to the right. Now we can loop all of these to go up and up and up. So now loop this one up and loop this one up and immediately I can see that I forgot to add bands here so not a problem what we're going to do I'm going to actually lift those two off and place two bands from here to here and put those bands back on that's what happens when my brain engages before my fingers, or my fingers rather, engage before my brain. <laughs> Lift these two off and put those across to there and put those bands back. Okay, I'm going to loop this center one up to here. You're going to dig down and grab those two and loop to the middle and then these two and loop to the middle. Okay dig all the way down you're finding two bottom silver bands and loop up now these are tight because they've been double double looped remember so looping these all the way up here when you get to the center point here you're going to find the top two loop to their corresponding side 
the next top two to their corresponding side and then these ones up to the middle next we're doing brown and the brown and then the skin tone to the top of our loom there's quite a few parts to this aren't there now if I was just doing this on an extended loom it would be a little bit easier but we've got some fancy footwork again I'm sorry because we're doing it on a single loom let's take these off and we're going to leave this on our holding hook until we are ready for it ease off the loom now it's going to look a bit like a shovel on the end of his hand don't worry about that what we're going to do take two brown bands and we're going to roll this up like that and you're going to take your first two and I'm going to loop it on my fingers like that and place it around twist it because his his uh, hammer has bindings on it so I'm going to just put those brown bands around like that so that they look like the brown leather bindings that his axe has let's do the same on the other side pop that on and give it another twist and slide that on straighten things up like that and that is going to be his hammer on that hand okay so you've got one normal hand and one hammer hand that can wait until we've done our body okay so we're going to move forward now onto his torso and I'm using a light coffee color band for his torso and also brown I'm going to use a couple of silver for his peg leg and a couple of black um, we have his arms sitting to one side and his head sitting to one side so we will use those when we need to we're going to be double banding we are going to need our rainbow loom hook which has the base removal tool because we're going to be using the move it forward technique um, because we have more columns to use than we actually have on our loom so we're going to start with columns one and two at the same height column three is going to be half a peg higher okay um, we are having the arrows facing towards us the open part of the peg um, and we're double banding taking two bands at a time and placing them on the pegs together as if they were one because we're going to be using the move it forward technique we're going to start by just putting two here so that they can move to the next um, column across when they need to so we'll start by putting two here doing nothing and then another two across from here to here and I'm going to just lay these bands down for our first three columns We do five pair down here. Now this column finishes just a little bit lower than the one we just did. So that's equal that's just a bit lower <laughs> and now let's do the third column 
And this one finishes a little bit lower again, just to here. Okay, now we're going to use some brown bands, still double banding, and these are going to go all the way on this particular column to the bottom of our loom. The next column goes to the bottom of the loom. Oops. Now with this next column so my bands are stuck together. I'm just going to put a single band here and then I'm going to take, well actually before I do that I'm going to take that band off, I'm going to put two bands here, okay, to, to move across to the next column when we're ready for it. But I'm not ready for it yet, okay. I'm going to put two here as well, alright, and then what I'm going to do is have a pair here and let's see a pair here like that. Now obviously if this is the groin area we have two that need to go down to this side here so we're going to put two there and let them just sit and another two from here oops and twist this band annoying being twisted all the time. Another two from here to here. So you have two that will go across on these two bands like that. Okay. So now we need to do some crossover bands. Take a single figure eight, loop it on itself and we're going to put those across. Let me move the angle of my camera just a bit. Another one here, and another one here. Now this one is going to stretch across, but we haven't got the other two pegs to stretch it to, so it's just going to sit on here. And then the next one is going to go from here, and again it's going to go across to those other two columns, but they're not here yet, so it will sit just here. Now we want to put our first arm and our first arm is the one that has the hammer. Okay, So pushing, putting your hook through the first set of loops for the first column, you attach them there. Now I did take mine off the holding hook as you can tell. The second column gets linked here, push everything down and then the third column the loops for the third column. Push your hook in and they get put here. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to do is a layer because I don't want him to just be slim. I want him to come out as a, as a bit chubby. Alright, so I'm taking another two bands and we're doing a layer on top of that first set of bands just three pair, so we've got these three here as a second layer. Now we're going to put crossover bands between the first peg to the middle peg. Oops. On top of that layer that we just did, we want to incorporate that layer into it. Alright, so we want to put his foot on. What we're going to do for his foot is take two black bands, oops, wrap them around a hook once and twice. Take another two black bands, wrap them around your hook once and twice. We're going to slide that onto two 
black bands like that make sure they're nice and even let go of this side take two black bands slide that one on and reclaim all right so that's like that on one side get those other two ends and you're going to take another two black bands put them on your end of your hook and slide those on and reclaim so it's like that now we're going to put one set of loops here and one set of loops here. Okay, see, get back there. All right. I think we're ready to loop up our first two columns. So dig down, find the first set of brown bands at the bottom here, and we loop up. Same on this side. Loop up. Dig down past the crossover bands and loop up. You want to push those back with the back of your hook, okay? Over to this side here. Now, oh, if I can get my hook out. What I'm going to do next, I need to go under the crossover band. Okay, the crossover band is right here. I need to go under the crossover band. So I'm going to stick my hook here, go under the crossover band, and grab these two bands at the top. Okay, they're the top two brown bands and I'm going to move them to the center peg here. All right. Now, then I'm going to dig down and loop up, dig down and loop up. When I get to here, I have to do a little bit of fancy footwork here as well, okay? I want to be able to loop this down and down. So, take this set of brown bands and loop them up. Before I can loop this brown one down, I actually have to dig past this crossover band, this tan or coffee colored, light coffee, crossover band. I've got to move that out the way and grab just the two top layer bands here, these two top ones, and loop them up to get them out of the way. Then I have to go under, push that crossover band back out the way so I can grab those two brown bands and drag them down. Okay. Now before I actually place those down, what I want to do is loop this one up. Now, when I place these down, there's a continuity, okay? Because what I'll do next is move that one down. So dig down here. I want to find these, these brown bands. So I have to be careful. And you can see and I can't. <laughs> and there's a couple of crossover bands that we need to push out the way. I'm going to use my hook to get them, grab them out the way, grab those two top brown bands. I've got one, there's the other, and drag those down. Now you can tell if you've got the right bands because the shape of, of the band afterwards is like a teardrop, and that's what you want. If you don't have that teardrop shape, if it looks sort of misshapen, you know you've done something wrong. Right, so now I'm going to dig down here and I'm going to find the tan bands. And I'm going to loop those. I know it's not the first column, it's the second column, but I'm looping these up to the top. Okay, all the way up to here. Now, I'm going to make sure that I'm pushing past this crossover band. This crossover band here has to get out the way. All right, so I need to get rid of that crossover band, push it out the way. I'm going to turn my hook around, grab those two top bands, and loop up. I'm doing this first layer, okay, this top layer, leaving these two bands here. I've only got one more set here to do. Get the crossover band out the way, push my hook in, and grab those two bands. I'm going to turn my loom around. 
I'm going to take these top layered ones off my loom but I need to leave the crossover bands where they are so I'm going to poke my hook between the bottom layer and the top layer and lift that up and move it to one side that one can stay there that needs to stay there again lift this up and drag it over what you're doing is exposing can you see you're exposing that bottom layer there yeah and it's only these two that you have to take off because these ones stay in place turn your loom around again now we can dig down and find those two bottom layered bands and loop them up and loop those ones up and loop those ones up We're up to the arms dig all the way down past the skin tone bands till you find the two bottom bands and drag those up again the same find the two bottom bands and to the side here now once we're at the side we've kind of locked this first column in this is now safe for us to take off our loom gently does it you do not want this middle column to come off the loom okay so I do use a hook to help me make sure that middle column is safely in its place once we've done that this column then becomes free so we're going to turn our loom over and using our base removal tool take the mini base plate out and budge it forward so that you have a free space here to put your column of pegs on like that now take this column of pegs off from the front row so it's not number one anymore it's going to become number four push it into place it has to be the same height as what is now column number one it was column number two so you're in the offset configuration we still have another column that we need to do so because of that we're going to take two of the flesh tone I'm sorry flesh tone the coffee colored and we'll put those here to drag across when we need to the two that were sitting there doing nothing now get moved to that peg so you see these all get moved down let's lay our bands for this particular column and if you remember it this column of um, coffee colored bands like coffee finishes one above oops that's three not two so we finish just here and that's lower if you can see now we move to some brown bands I'm going to just put one pair of brown here to start with now what we need to do these two have to come across to here okay but again we have another another column so let's take another two and place them here so that they are ready to get moved across when they need to okay like that now also here these are going to get moved to down here I believe so let's take our two bands and place and we will move these across to here but again likewise we need another two to go across so take another two brown bands and they just sit on this peg doing nothing and we put those on top like that okay now this is his peg leg so we need some silver bands I'm going to use a single silver figure eight loop it on itself and it's going to go like that so one two and three now I'm going to finish this off by taking a black band wrapping it once and twice taking a silver band figure eight loop it on itself 
and slide on like that and then one more time another silver band, this one's a bit scrunched up loop it on itself, figure eight slide these bands on and reclaim this is going to be his little stump leg that can pop on the end just here all right so now what we need to do is make sure that we can link things in okay I'm actually going to put um, I'm going to put an end cap here and the reason I'm doing that is I don't want his trousers to sort of become a bit distorted mm, you know it's it's okay it's okay we'll loop up here it doesn't matter I'm going to dig down here and loop up and loop up this doesn't matter that we're not doing this row yet I'm going to dig to here because that's already there ready to go so what I'm going to do I'm going to dig down and grab the two top bands and I'm going to link those to the center I'm just going to make sure it's not too tight it's not it's good now I can link down and find those two bands and I'm going to loop those up all right next I'm going to dig down and I need to find these two top brown bands and loop them to the side the other thing I need to do is grab this crossover band and I should have done that beforehand and drag that across and I should have dragged this one across too I'm going to lift this up and drag that across and place that back I'm sorry my mistake let's drag the rest of these crossover bands over That would have been bad to forget. All right, let's now loop up the rest of this middle column. And the other thing that we must do and not forget is to put his head on because that would be bad <laughs> to have no head. <laughs> All right, so here's his head. Let's move his moustache out the way. We will move his, this is his um, chin extension, we'll move that out the way. Underneath here you see that there are three end caps. Push your hook through the first of the three. It's the centre one, okay. Then there's the one for his chubby cheeks. That's going to go there. And then there's the other one for his chubby cheeks. and that's going to go here alright we'll loop this middle one up to here and then dig down you're finding the two bottom light coffee bands and looping them across alright this column this first column is now looped in we can take it off please be very careful we do not want this to come off Okay, so gently does it. Make sure things are pushed down. And take that off. Turn your loom over using your base plate removal tool budge this one across. Now this is our last budge across, we don't have to do another one. So let's put that and it's going to be the same height as the one in front of it. Okay, push that down, make sure it's nice and firm. Because it's our last one, we don't have to put another pair on here to move to the next column because there is no next column. So just find those two that were lying around doing nothing. And if I can get my hook there, we're moving that down to this peg here, missing that first one. Okay, lay our bands. We're still double banding. Okay. 
and we're going to finish one higher than we started and that will be here now these are going to come up here but let's put our pair of brown bands on first like that and then we move these brown bands up now we're going to be doing a bit of fancy footwork here because we need this to finish at his stump so we put one pair here and then these two get linked up to there we must pull our crossover bands over all right these ones you have to dig around for them a little bit oh, duh. <laughs> really dig hard <laughs> drag these across. Oh no, we're not going to drag these across and I'll tell you why. Leave the light coffee ones. We need to put his arm on and then the layer. So I'm going to turn his arm, his body around. I'm pushing my hook through the first two. Okay. And I'm going to put those on this peg here. I'll push my hook through and collect the bands for the next column. And there you go here and then the third one because these arms have three columns and they go here all right so that's the arm on now the layer push these down two bands here and here and here see we didn't forget we were good <laughs> drag these across. These are the crossover bands. Come on. There we go. Like that. Okie dokie. Now we're going to loop up that middle column. Get some of these bands out of the way. Right, we're going down here to his leg. We're going to find those two top brown bands and loop to the side up here. Then find the middle and they get looped up. Now, I want to take these top two off. I'm going to loop this up. I'm going to loop these two up as well before I replace. So one and two. I'm going to put that back there. Now I'm going to find the top two layered coffee, light coffee, and loop them up. Push that crossover band out the way to find the next two. Loop up and the next two. You're only finding the top two for that first layer, okay? Oh, so this one is still intact. We're going to take these off. Put your thumb and forefinger in place and we lift the first one and we lift the second one. We've now exposed this bottom layer of bands to be able to loop up. I'm going to dig down and again you have to go past the crossover bands to find the top two brown and loop that up. Then I can find the bottom two of these light coffee bands and loop up and I might as well just go all the way to the top make sure you're digging down and finding just the bottom two at this point we loop here all right now we have to loop these ones in dig down Now, this is where we're going to dig down here, find the bottom two, and loop to the side. This is going to be our tie off. I'm actually going to just run my hook around the outside of that peg to loosen it up a bit. Take two of the light coffee bands, dig your hook through, pull back to the outside of that peg. 
to the back side of it, take the two closest to you up, over and off, and pull tight. We're ready to take him off the loom. I use a hook to help me. I don't want any broken bands. have multiple bands it can sometimes hurt you more than help you to rip it off your loom okay so we take him off our loom stuck in his peg leg out. There we go, let's pull him into shape a bit. Now his tummy needs to be out a bit. There we go. Now the tie-off band that we have here, we've got these two tie-off bands. You're going to take them, splay them open, there's two of them, and poke his head through like that and that is going to secure it's going to stop it from going anywhere okay his moustache has gone a bit AWOL but that's fine the tie off band we used for his chin extension if you look here just here this is where these bands all sort of meet and there's a, a little gentle hole in the middle here just there poke your hook through grab the band pull it back and as you pull it back it curves up and that's going to form his chin and again with this splay it open and pop his head through it and it sort of acts as a necktie I guess his moustache is really getting a bit AWOL you can secure it with a, with a, a band or two if you wanted to um, I I really haven't bothered, it's not something I thought was uh, a problem but if you wanted to I guess you could get a couple of brown bands and just go under where these are here and attach it to the uh, underside here of his chin Pull one through like that, reclaim it, and then just put it over. I mean, the, as I said, these brown parts are actually just bindings on his moustache. So um, the fact that they're tied it doesn't matter because that's what they are, tied. But that just kind of links it to the side of his face instead of having it wander around. So again, on this side go through the back of his moustache where the brown bit is pull that through like so find a spot that's equal to the other side grab let's make sure his moustache is right oops come here you grab that through uh, there we go Reclaim, do a little slip knot, and then splay that open to pop the moustache through. And I did it twice. Once and twice. And that kind of keeps his moustache in place. Make his hands angle the right way, or his arms, I should say. Um, I drew eyeballs on. I just used a blue Sharpie and then put a spot of black in with a black Sharpie. That's his legs. Now, if you want to um, do sort of like 
lacing up his chest I used a couple of black bands to do that and um, basically all you're going to do sorry I'm being foolish here uh, da -da -da -da. yeah okay put those like that and pull tight so it's a slip knot do the same again So you have three like that. Now, if you push your hook through his chest, grab one end and pull the black through and come down again at an angle over here and pull through. You're sort of going to lace it and then come down through one side here and again pull it through and poke it out here grab it see how it's sort of forming a cross on his chest I guess um, over the other way silly me one side here we'll poke it back through the other side like that then I have two little ends here I'm going to loop one through the other and then if I want to hide it and not use a clip I'll put the same colour as his vest like that and then I can just sort of slide this up his back and hide it up his back a bit like so I'm really paranoid I could actually just sort of loop it around his neck again but that's how I that's how I tied his chest together like that um, for his cuff around his boot um, I went through the back here grab some brown and you're taking a single figure eight loop it on itself and pull it through and reclaim the end and I think I did this about 14 times so that was one two three decided to go a bit AWOL and of course I have no nail there which really doesn't make things helpful <laughs> seven eight Eleven, twelve, oops, that was twelve. Thirteen and fourteen. Now, with fourteen, what you want to do is have a toothpick or another hook or something, and you're going to split how that's held like that. Okay, what we're going to do is wrap this around his foot, wrap it around his foot without losing your bands. Duh. <laughs> Okay, 
so wrap it around his foot when you get back to the beginning this is where we started this was number one you're going to take your hook with the with the 14th band on it okay and you're going to go through number one again and then reclaim the end of your bands okay then take another single brown loop it on itself and you want that to go through all of those bands reclaim take the two closest to you up over and off and tie off in a slip knot okay so that is in a slip knot now what we're going to do with that now is just wrap it around the foot basically because that's the, that's the cuff of his boot okay so what we're going to do I'm going to drag this through actually make sure that's secure it's twisted on itself I'm going to go through the foot through those bands of the foot see I can split that like that I'm going to grab these two brown bands that we tied off with push them through the middle of the foot like that through the middle of the cuff of the boot so that's holding it together okay and then I'm going to splay it open and pop my foot through like that now the reason I've done that is to keep the sole of the shoe close to the boot so that it doesn't sort of um, go walk about and doesn't look odd so there we have his leg his peg leg the cuff of his boot his moustache his his hammer his horns only thing we're missing is his jacket now to do his jacket take a single loom and we're going to be in a standard configuration and we're going to make a square in the move it forward technique and you're going to have one two three four five six seven eight columns okay and it's going to be one two three four five rows so it's not very big which is great we're going to be double banding we're going to be putting two up oh, the arrow is facing towards you two here to go on the next the next column okay put two here and two here lay your bands five pair one two three four and five and do that for the other two columns as well one two Oops, I'm throwing them everywhere. Four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Now for the bottom. What we have to do is put two here to move forward to the next column. Oh, I hate twisted bands. <laughs> put your hook around and untwist them. There we go. So it goes like that. And then the next two go here. And we need crossover bands. It's just a single band that you're going to stretch across those three columns. We're going to put an end cap here so that we can start our looming right at that spot. Single band wrapped twice and popped on the end here. Dig down, find the two 
top brown bands and loop to the right and then dig down and find the next two top brown bands and loop to the right okay and then we're going to loop these just up to the top and you just need to do the first and second column you don't need to do the third column just yet do the second column first push those crossover bands back out of the way with the back of your hook the reason I do the second column first is when I get to the first column I'm going to dig down here and move that across and then I can take this off push everything down grab my base removal tool and then move the big base And move that across and make sure it's nice and tight take that first column and make it column number four as I said we need to do one two three four five six seven eight so two bands place on here and then move the two that were doing nothing onto those pegs like so this is number four Now, crossover bands go between five and six pegs, col um, columns. We have eight, so we really should split it so that it's one set going over four and then the second set going over four. Put two bands on here to go to the next column when we're ready and then move those over. So we'll slide these crossover bands over to this column but then for column five, we're going to start using a new set of crossover bands. Okay, Dig down, find the top two, move them across to the, to the right. And then we loop up this column. Dig down, find the two, and loop across. Push everything down, make sure everything's secure in place, and we lift up. Move your crossover bands, I'm sorry, cross the bands, move your base plates and then move your column of pegs. We're going to do number five. So put your two extra that go to column six here and move those bands over. bands, place them ready for column six over here and move these ones over. Now as I said we're going to start with a new set of crossover bands so take a single and move it from column four to column five like that and now we go to loop up find those two bottom, the t I'm sorry the two top brown and move those across they're on the bottom layer is what I'm trying to say and then move up 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 and up and grab the two bottom from this and move across push everything down everything across for column number six
two that will go to column number seven and these two go on there like that lay the bands down For those of you that don't know, this is my mini mural technique. It's uh, how I make capes. So it was a very familiar technique for me to use. Put those two there. Now we're going to take another two. And they sit here doing nothing. And we move these two across. Alright, let's drag our crossover bands over. And we can loop up, take the top two, move to the right. Oops. And then grab these top two and move to the right. If it's tight, wiggle your hook around the outside of the peg. We can take this column off. Push everything down. We're up to number seven. here for next time and grab these two and that, that will be for number eight so they're our last two that we have to do there to move to eight, but move these ones across and then drag our crossover bands over Make sure we get both of them. And we take this off. Merge our big base plate forward. And this will be our last column, number eight. So all we need to do is grab these two, place them there, and lay our bands. There's one, let's find the other. There he is. Two. Three. These ones across. Make sure you move your crossover bands. These ones come across. And we can actually loop these two up at the same time. Or one at a time, it doesn't matter.
get those last two bears. I want that silly crossover band to get out of the way. There we go. Now I'm going to take my hook and push it down through here and take two brown bands, drag them back up, reclaim the end and take the two closest to me up, over and off and pull tight. I'm ready to take this off the loom. Now, all I'm going to do with these tie-off bands is just move them under these bands here. So I'm going to grab them with my hook and just drag them back and hide them under the middle of these bands. Like that. Okay, so it's a little square. Now, you're going to find in the first the first column here, you're going to go and dig and find a hole like that. Okay, and you're going to stretch that hole out and you're going to put his arm through it like that. And then you're going to do the same on the second side in the same spot. Find that space and put his whole hammer and arm and everything through that little area. And that is his jacket and that's Gobba. I really hope you enjoy making him. Take care. Bye-bye.